Week 12 is officially in the books and Chris Lovett and I are looking back at the games to point out who excelled this week. So when we look at some of the good performances in this week 12, I think you definitely, I mean, I might be biased here, but you definitely have to look at the 49ers win against the Rams. They're now back in the playoff mix after their 23 to 20 win. And they've actually swept the Rams and have won four consecutive games against their LA rivals. So that was a huge win just to get back into it. Yeah, definitely. It, it was probably their most uh, impressive win of the season. The Rams obviously on a, a pretty high upward tra- trajectory at the moment. Their, their stocks are rising quickly. Um, and yeah, I thought all around it was an excellent performance from the 49ers. They got, even got some good showings from um, their some some of their rookies. Um, and yeah, they sh- they should be really impressed with with that performance. Yeah, I mean the return of Debo Samuel and Raheem Mostert was huge. Like Debo Samuel had a career high in receptions and yards with 134 yards, and it's just kind of surprising and shows how good Kyle Shanahan is. That like Nick Mullins, a guy that I mean nobody have ever heard of like until like a year ago or like I don't know how many months ago, but he like outplayed like Jared Goff, like a former number one pick. That just shows you how important coaching is in the league. Yeah, definitely. And the um, also, if you go back to the beginning of November, uh, the, the uh, 49ers, they had, I think it was 22 players either on injured reserve or on the injury report or, or the COVID list. That's almost all, well, that, that's te- potentially all the starters on, on the team. Um, and they've shown excellent resilience to to not give up on this season. They're prob they're probably in the hardest division in 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 football right now. Um, three other very good teams in it, and yeah, they've they've done very well to even even be considered in in the playoff picture at the moment. Yeah, and I have I have very high hopes of like regarding the rest of the season because I've also read yesterday that apparently George Kittle and Jimmy G might not actually be out for the season after all. And they're both, they both look very well in their rehab and might actually come back this season, which would give the team obviously a huge boost towards the end. And maybe they can make a playoff push. And I don't think any team in the NFC would want to play the 49ers if they're like back and healthy. Yeah, I would t- totally agree. Um, one of my big um, highlights from the week, and it's a pretty obvious one, but I still found myself um, slightly amazed by it, is the Chiefs and obviously specifically that, that excellent offense. Um, you almost run out of superlatives to, to describe the Chiefs offense. Uh, it was easily the best offense last year, and it's just got even better this year. And they've added some excellent, uh, well, obviously Clyde Edwards-Hilaire was, was an excellent rookie they added. Um, they've seen development from their players and they can just beat you in so many ways. Um, I think when I'm watching the Chiefs, I don't think two offensive performances are ever the same. There's always something new they're adding in. And I think at the moment, they're pretty much just um, definitely Im- impossible to predict and maybe even impossible to stop at the moment. Yeah, I mean, they're just, they continue to amaze. And I mean, Andy Reid just continues to to produce like and great coaches and great games. I mean, he has now, it's his seventh 10-win season in eight years with him. Like Kansas City has seven 10-win seasons with him. And they, yeah, like you said, I mean, they have so many weapons, like Edward Hilaire, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, Nicole Hartman, yeah. Watkins, Robinson, and even like the pickup of Le'Veon Bell, which they, he, they haven't even used him that much. Like he could be so much more effective if they want to use him more. That's just a completely another weapon for them and a different way to they beat to beat you. Yeah, and as I mean, as if having all of those weapons wasn't enough, they're even doing things that we've never really seen before. Like they've they've run a few plays this year with quarterback motion, where Mahomes will motion out and sprint back back across the formation. It's it's small things like that that when you um, compile it all together, all the weapons, all the play calling, all the schemes, and how great Mahomes is. I mean, I think Mahomes may be starting to get to that stage, like we see with other great uh, sporting greats, where you start to take them, uh, sorry, take take them for granted slightly. Um, you know, 30 touchdowns and two interceptions, and he's on pace for a 5,000 yard season. Um, yeah, definitely one of the most special players we've ever seen at, at the quarterback position. Yeah, that's actually a ridiculous stat, and 
I think if they can stay more or less healthy and nobody's going to land on the COVID list for a long period of time, they definitely have to be regarded as the Super Bowl favorite for me. If they if their offense continues to roll like this, like yeah, it's hard to see a defense that could stop them. Yeah, and I think for a defense to stop them, you need so many different things. Like we saw this week with um, Hill obviously having 200 yards receiving in the first quarter. As a defense, you need a corner with top top speed that that, that can run with him. Um, the Bucks didn't have that, and and they obviously paid the price. Um, you need extremely athletic uh, linebackers and and safeties to cover those running backs and tight ends. And you somehow need to find a way to get pressure with just four guys because you need seven back in coverage um, to try and slow down Mahomes. So it's pretty much an impossible task, and I, I definitely can't see a defense that, that's built with a minute that that can handle the Chiefs. My second positive of the week is, uh, is the Sean Watson. More so him, I think, than the Texans. Because like, it's kind of funny that every, ever since Bill O'Brien's departure, like, things are looking so much different for the Texans as a team and especially also for the Sean Watson. Like, if you ju- just look at kind of... He had only six passing touchdowns while he was still with Bill O'Brien. And since his firing, he has 18 and only two interceptions which is kind of amazing and how the coaching changed, changed the play of the Sean Watson. Yeah, definitely. And you've also got, got to factor in that the Bill O'Brien was also the GM um, and he seemed to be trying to do everything in his power to uh, stop Deshaun Watson almost, you know, trading away his, his number one target, not really putting any capital towards the offensive line. Um, I know they traded for, for, for Tunsil. Um, but yeah, they've, they've been reluctant to uh, invest in, in pass protection. And it seems like through all of that, um, and when you factor in he doesn't have a great defense, um, Deshaun can just, just keep it going. Um, and he's definitely yeah, emerging, if, if not already emerged, as, as a top five, definitely top seven quarterback um, in the NFL. Yeah, and the Texans just have to keep building around him and just basically do whatever he tells them to do and just give him a better O-line and maybe some more weapons. And apparently he has already met with kind of the, the owner of the Texans to kind of make sure who he wants to have as his new head coach in the coming season, which just shows you how big his influence is and how appreciated he actually is by the Texans because they know like they need to sign him to a new long-term contract and just kind of give him, give him whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely agree there. Um, This is a team that that could be set up for the future, maybe. Um, There's definitely still some holes there, but they're definitely a team on on an upward trend. Um, You know, they've got two wins in the last two weeks. Um, This week, they're facing the Colts who are um, on a bit of a downward trend after getting handled by Tennessee. So it'll be interesting to see how that momentum um, stacks up in in that divisional game on Sunday. My other highlight for the week that I was really impressed with is the Browns and specifically the Browns offense. And having, having watched um, football for, for quite some time now, I, I've, 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 I feel like I've seen this story before. Um, the Browns start off fairly well. Um, they're, they're going along quite nicely, winning a few games. And then the wheels just completely come off and their season falls apart. Um, and that just hasn't happened so far this season. Um, they're starting starting to get healthy again. They've got Nick Chubb back. I think Miles Garrett is back this week. Uh, they've got the number one rushing attack in the league. And I think Cleveland's finally found its identity on, on offense. Um, and I've been really impressed with them over the past few weeks, um, specifically the, the, the offense. Um, and I'm quite intrigued to see how far this team can go in, in, in the playoffs and if they can even maybe make a late push for the division too. Yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, they have been fairly good this season, but they're still, the schedule was, I think, almost the easiest of all the teams. And I'm still, I mean, the the rushing attack, don't get me wrong, is very impressive. And Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt are probably the best one-two punch you could dream of and have. Yeah. Chubb had another 144 yards with a touchdown. But for me, it's, I mean, the offense, obviously, is only going to be as good as Baker Mayfield. And he still like shows that he's not quite there yet for me. Like there's still a lot of mistakes in his game. I mean, this week against the Jags, okay, he he didn't have 
a turnover, had two touchdowns. So that was definitely an improvement. But the Browns can only go as far as he takes them for me. Yeah, and I I think we'll the 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 last five weeks of the season will go a long way to to answering those questions. Um, they play the two New York teams, which you can probably both chalk up as wins, um, and then the Titans, Ravens, and Steelers. So um, a stern test just going into the playoffs, which is I guess um, exactly what what you want to see. Um, and just to touch on Baker slightly, I mean, I think the Browns have been a bit unlucky with injuries this year. Obviously, um, Odell's gone down. Um, don't get me wrong, there's still plenty of, of playmakers there. You, you mentioned Chubb and Hunt. Um, he's also got um, Jarvis Landry, uh, Hooper and Joku um, that, that you can throw the ball to. Um, but I think they've also had quite <laughs> their their last couple of weeks have been uh, pretty bad weather. So I think some of their, their offensive stats have, have been a bit down from that. Um, I know they had the 10-7 game against the Texans. Um, but yeah, I think you're right in the fact that Baker's definitely not a finished product yet. He's not um, you know, going to take over games and, and, and throw for 400 yards. Um, but I'm, I'm quite intrigued to see where he goes. And he's, he's got this team winning games um, at, at, at the right time of the year. Um, I thought their their wheels might come off around week six, I think it was, when when they lost to the Steelers. Um, but they've they've been fairly consistent, and yeah, with the, the number one rushing attack in the league, an excellent one-two punch. I am quite quite intrigued to see where the Browns can go. 